that I wish this ideal uh this is I wish that this was the ideal of how to view a Christian. You know what I'm saying? To view Christianity. You know what I'm saying? I wish that people will recognize uh Christianity in this viewpoint. You know what I'm saying? That to me, if people will understand this ideal of being a Christian, people will want and gravitate to want to become a Christian. Because of this simple idea of of being a Christian, I know, it's, and and it's interesting that it's titled what it is. You know, uh, like I tell people, I am not going to be a fool deceived by this world, but I'm going to be a fool for Christ. And I love the concept of being a fool for Christ that Paul puts down here. That that anybody can resonate to this idea. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can resonate to this this viewpoint concerning of who you are. Anybody. You know what I'm saying? And people can relate to this idea concerning of being a Christian, pretty much. You know what I'm saying? But uh, let me get in the message. But let me read the chapter. But I love it. But the top of this message is called Becoming a Fool, Becoming Fools for Christ. That I believe that every Christian should be a fool for Christ. Every Christian should be. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, concerning of what this is saying, you know, uh, 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 about a really performing of pretty much how we supposed to look at our Christianity, you know what I'm saying? And look at this, the situation of who we are and who we becoming pretty much is what I like about this, uh, being a fool for Christ. But, you know, uh, let me read, uh, first Corinthians four and 10, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. See, we're wise in Christ. Ain't that good to be wise in Christ? You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, wise in Christ. Oh, let me let me uh, read the scripture because I like it going in. Okay, um, wise in Christ. We are weak. I mean, th right there, right there. Every human being in the world can relate to this idea of what this is saying. It says we are wise in Christ. We are weak. That, that's it. That's right there. Right there. Everybody, every human being in the world can say, guess what? I have a weakness. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm weak. You weak. She's weak. He's weak. We all weak. You know what I'm saying? We, every human being has a weakness inside of their bodies that they have a place that they does, do not have the inability to do or accomplish something concerning their life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a weakness. I mean, that's what, you know, I love about this idea of being a fool for Christ. That right there from the start. But watch this. But ye are strong. But Christ is strong. See, and you know, the thing about this, like I have the three H's nation code. It's called honest to be real uh uh humble to realize and humility to see reality but more likely to be honest about the the condition of a human being is what you're supposed to see from the get go is that you're weak that you know that you are weak that you don't have the inability to really truly perform what you are supposed to perform to fulfill your purpose and your purpose for every human being is supposed to be Genesis 1, 26, to be made in the image and the likeness of God. That is supposed to be everybody's purpose. But everybody has a choice to choose whether they want to fulfill that purpose or not. But the thing is, being honest will help you be real about your condition with inside yourself. And that's what really you know, uh, it's about what being a Christian is all about. You know, being a Christian is that you, you admit that you're a sinner, that you have 
sin inside you that will make you weak and not have the ability to accomplish the things that is of, of something spiritual. You know what I'm saying? We're supposed to realize that we're a sinner. We need salvation. We need to be saved. We need Jesus Christ in our life to give us the power and the ability to be Genesis 1, 26, made in the image and likeness of God. It's what I love about this concept of being a fool for Christ's sake. You know, being a fool for Christ's sake. But I'm going to get talk about that sake when I get this over. Now, the thing is, but he is, but we, but ye are strong. Jesus is strong. You know what I'm saying? That I talked about yesterday about, you know, uh, Satan is called the strong man. Jesus referred to Satan as a strong man. And the reason why he referred to Satan as a strong man, he's saying that he is stronger than us. He is stronger to humanity. You know what I'm saying? Because we, as much as we operate in the flesh, we will end up, you know, doing things based, based upon the lust of the flesh that will have us sinning and sinning that will cause us to become weak. As what Jesus said to the disciples, for the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And we're going to be weak when by our own ability if we come against Satan. But that's what our weakness is supposed to tell us that we need Jesus Christ. Not that he's an option. See, oh, goodness gracious. Because that's the problem of the situation concerning the ideal viewpoint of Christians. We treat Jesus Christ as an option. People, people, people are not careful like, oh, you know, I, you know, I'm going to go do this. You know what I'm saying? And we go, I'm going to go do that. And then it's like, oh, you know, do it, do it the way Jesus would do it or do it the way I want to do it. Hmm. Well, let me see here. See, we get to those places, you know, uh, in situations that we make decisions in our life that we will treat Jesus Christ as an option. You know what I'm saying? When he's supposed to be what, what you said, Jesus. Okay. Bam. <laughs> you know, I'm going to do it. You know, like you said, not my will, but thy will, I'll do it. You know what I'm saying? I'll do it regardless in spite of what my flesh says, in spite of what, you know, the condition of my heart that is yielded to do things based upon my lust of the flesh. I will go walk by faith and do it by the spirit is what the ideal of what a Christian has to see the protocol of being a Christian or learning to become a Christian. That's how it's supposed to go, that we get to the place that we will make a decision according to the word of God in spite of what our flesh did, just as Jesus did concerning the cross. That, man, like, you know, Roman soldiers ripped me up. You know what I'm saying? It's, that was Jesus' uh, mindset. You know, do as you may. He told Judas, do as you may. Go betray me so I can go fulfill my purpose. You know what I'm saying? We need to be about that protocol concerning us being like Christ. That okay, I'm finna obey this per I'm finna obey you concerning this situation according to the word of God, in spite of what everybody says. See, because that's gonna lead to this part. Watch this. It says, Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Oh, this when this fool for Christ gets kind of I don't know about being a fool for Christ, but ye are honorable unto heaven. See, Jesus was honorable unto heaven concerning to fulfill the will of God to die on the cross for our sins. You know what I'm saying? He was honoring heaven. But guess what? He was despised by people. He was despised by his own people that he taught the kingdom of God to, that he fed in the wilderness, you know, Two, with two fishes and five loaves of bread, fed 5,000, those people that were screaming and crucify him were a part of those people. You know what I'm saying? He did all this for humanity. You know what I'm saying? I mean, these people, and he was despised by his people. Same, same thing for us. We have to make choices concerning the word of God and be ready to be despised by people. Despising by people should not be a shock to us. You know what I'm saying? When Jesus said that if they hated him, they will hate you. You know what I'm saying? And Christians these days, they look at that. Oh, whoa. People don't like me. Oh, no. 
I mean, I don't know about making that choice. I don't know about doing what the word of God says. Oh, no, because this person doesn't like me. And that person said something about me. And I'm not going to have friends around me. You know, that, that kind of, no, that's not being a fool for Christ. A fool for Christ is ready to be despised. It's ready for someone to lie on them. It's ready for somebody to do something negative to them. They, they're ready for whatever the world has for them to to stop, try to stop them from fulfilling their purpose. You know what I'm saying? Genesis 1, 26, they're ready. They're not, you know, somebody betrayed me. Somebody stole from me. Somebody did something bad to me. That is not a shock. You know what I'm saying? That should not shock a Christian. You know what I'm saying? We're, that is supposed to be the performance that's supposed to happen to us. You know what I'm saying? But we need to be about truly uh, uh, doing the will of God. That's all that we need to be about. Just as Jesus afflict, was afflicted and took that brutal, brutal punishment and, and been mistreated as so as we Christians, as so as we for the sake of the will of God to bring glory to God. As it says in um, 1 Peter uh, 4 and 16, talking about, you know, suffer for Christians are supposed to be about suffering. For the glory of God We're, and being not ashamed. That's what, uh, that's the, supposed to be the title of our performance. You know what I'm saying? That we stand upon the truth of God's word. It is written in spite of what the world say, in spite of what people that go to church say, but it is written. You know what I'm saying? It's what a fool for Christ is all about. But guess what? As what it says in the beginning. Yes, we are weak. But he is strong. You know what I'm saying? It's to stay humble, you know, in the position of our of who we are. But he will give us the ability to handle whatever this world has for us. Whatever attack Satan has assigned for us, we are supposed to be ready for it. And know that we, through Christ Jesus, are made overcomers. We are more than conquerors for them that love us. I mean, if we love, we have the love of God in our hearts. We are more than conquerors. We're supposed to conquer every obstacle, every situation, every circumstance that come our way by the power of Jesus Christ. It's what being a fool for Christ is all about. You know what I'm saying? But you must understand that you will be despised. You know what I'm saying? That people are not going to like you. And they're not going to like, you know, what you say concerning the truth. Because they believe the lies of this world system, unfortunately. But you're going to be about standing on God's truth, explaining God's truth to help people to understand what it's all about concerning its, concerning the purpose of, like I said, Genesis 1.26, made in the image and the likeness of God, is the, what it's supposed to be all about of being a fool for Christ. So, and, and, and also... That you know it's foolish in this world system to love your uh, love everybody. You know, <laughs> you so and this we live in a system that hate is the thing to do. You know, uh, and to it's fool to love your enemies. Yeah, uh, they think it's foolish to love your enemies. The world system does. You know what I'm saying? It's foolish to have joy in the midst of a storm. You know what I'm saying? And joy, you're supposed to be worried about everything, sorrow, and you're supposed to feel bad about it. See, it's full to have peace that passes understanding when confusion, conflict, and chaos is happening. You know what I'm saying? They think it's full that you're supposed to be uh, worried about what's going on in your life. That The world will see that as foolish. You know what I'm saying? It's foolish to walk by faith. You know what I'm saying? To stand on something spiritual and, and, because the world is all about what's natural and do the natural flow system of how this world operates very foolishly. But guess what? I'm about being a fool for Christ. They can, the world can call me whatever they want to call me. Whatever negative thing they have to say to me, they can do it. I will bless them in the name of Jesus and pray that they will have an encounter with Jesus Christ. That they will become a fool for Christ. That they will uh, be honest of the condition of their heart. That they're weak and they need Jesus Christ. And they need them desperately more and more in their life. And that's why I'll be all about being a fool for Christ. All right. That's the message.
God be glory to him forever and ever in Jesus' name. Amen. For life. Give me the life sentence.